Does the Vice President, Yemi Shibajo, really think the number of kidnapping cases in Nigeria is being exaggerated? And also, can we say the cost of governance in Nigeria is high or maybe moderate? Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anako. Now, recently, we got reports that the Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Shimajo, stated that the number of kidnapping cases in Nigeria is being exaggerated. However, he and his spokesperson, Laulu Akonde, uh, had stated that he never used the word exaggerated. So it's playing with tenses now. So what do we believe as, you know, Laulu Akonde has come out to say he never said exaggerated? Well, from previous reports, um, one would say it's the President's word against, you know, ours. But we have in the studio this evening uh, to have this conversation with us, um, Mr. <laughs> Roman, it's good to have you join us in the studio. Yeah. Roman Adini is a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. So it's a, he said, you know, he didn't say, we said, but the word exaggerated could obviously have other meanings. Yeah. It could also have, let's just play with similes and I'm just, <laughs> because, I'm going to try to read out the yeah. vice president's statement as opposed to um, what a Fanny Ferrer quoted. Um, also, say, Senator Sheo Sani um, put out a tweet saying that um, he respects the office of the vice president, but he does not understand why the vice president would make um, light of the issue of kidnappings in Nigeria. But let's see what um, the vice president said. He responded to the, of course, the reactions of Nigerians saying that he did not say that kidnapping in Nigeria is exaggerated uh, and not entirely new. Now, he said in a statement today uh, that he was entirely misquoted and his words were taken out of context, saying that the media reports, especially those that quoted him saying that kidnapping in Nigeria is exaggerated and not entirely new. He said that he was at a town hall meeting in New York on Sunday evening. Yeah. Uh, and said social media tends to be hysterical about practically everything, that he was not necessarily talking about kidnapping. Well, when um, I think I've gone through that, and when I read it, and um, you know, the, the challenge we find ourselves is we need to, as a people, everything is not, is not we need to not joke about everything. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yes, uh, because we're saying that the, the vice president is not human, mm -hmm. is not fallible. You, you know, be, you have the right to be, at some point, you know, when the communication is not, you know, straight enough, mm -hmm. the people might tend to misquote you. And when they misquote you and you're able to come up with a position from your media spokesperson, I think we should take it at that. But the question is this. Uh, the, the word is that exaggeration it, it, because the tension in the Nigerian uh, in Nigeria at the moment now, especially in areas where we have kidnappings happening, that is so rampant that people cannot even ply the road at night. People cannot even go and visit their family. You know, so the word exaggerated when you place it right together, you know, it negates what the people are feeling. So but that's I, why I, I just want chance, to, I, I want to, take I want to take what he's saying as, you know, clearing the air yeah. or putting, putting... I think you should state what he said first. Yeah. So and where p the people got that from. Well, he that said from, yeah. that he thinks that social media tends to be hysterical about practically everything. So let's say, for example, the kidnappings. Yes. I get, to, I get this vibe from people saying, oh, the media in Nigeria tends to exaggerate what is happening in Sudan, for example, and other countries in Hong Kong, but never really, you know, beams the light on the killings and the kidnappings that are happening in Nigeria. We just report them and then gloss over it. So if he's saying that, the, that social media is being hysterical about practically everything, the, the I'm wondering, <laughs> are we hysterical <laughs> enough as to the... Because whether we like it or not, what is happening in Nigeria is serious. In one week, we had 18-plus dead people. Yes. And it, 
it just we glossed over it and we moved on to other matters and politics you know literally came with the stories of arms in a certain yeah. arsenal for some governor so is the vice president really being fair to what is happening and the dead people who are victims of this kidnappings and violence in Nigeria that's why when the the people you know took it out in and then you begin to get comments from Afeni Ferry from major stakeholders in in, in the Nigerian space, it means that that statement is weighty. You know, be it, be it uh, that he said it or it was assumed that he said it, you know, in the context of where we are right now, mm. you know, any security is the number one challenge that we're facing as a people. And until we fin finalize and, you know, nip everything in the board, anything around security, because people who are victims can tell the story. Because people who, who want people who cannot travel, take for instance uh, about a week ago or less, we had about somebody ferrying uh, somebody from the traffic between Benioe Road, you know, in an helicopter in jammed chopper. in Lagos. Mm -hmm. You know, that means that you know the fear is real. So if anybody says it's not real, you know, that's that's a typical example of the real fear. Because uh, what the man would have been experiencing at that time was uh, a fear of imagination that it could happen. Mm -hmm. And that was the cheapest option it could take. Let, let's look at what the Pan uh, Yoruba uh, Social Political Organization said about this. Now, Fanny Ferry on Tuesday condemned the state, statement credited to the Vice President over the issue of insecurity, especially kidnapping in the Southwest and some other parts of the country. Now, the alleged, they, this group alleged that the Vice President said on Sunday that the United States of America, or said in America, that kidnapping incidents in the Southwest were politically motivated. One, the Afeni Ferry described the statement as unfortunate and provocative. Now, they say there's so many things the vice president obviously said in the, in, in that statement. People, so I was going to ask a question. Okay, as well. a, a person who occupies such a sensitive office, whether you're a president, a governor, if you're occupying such a sensitive office, should diplomacy and choice of words not be? the first priority, top on your priority list every time you face a crowd, knowing that there's the media, there are the naysayers, there are the critiques, whether the constructive or non-constructive critiques. So should words not be picked carefully? And, and why say that stuff like this is politically motivated when lives that are being lost are not political per se? Well, I, 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 for, for me, I think um, the choice of word was too heavy. And then, you know, when, because the bulk of the security report stops on the presidency's table, so they have more information than we do. Mm -hmm. But the ones we have don't say they are political, especially when the life of an innocent people have been lost, especially when uh, we've not had in recent time that a political big wig has been kidnapped and you know, ransom has been paid. Mm. Because when the political big wig has been kidnapped, before you know it, they find their way out. But the innocent Nigerians who ply the road of the Southwest, you know, who, who find themselves in, in arms way at any point in time. Some of them are just ordinary people who can't even pay this ransom. You understand? It, when the media reports, there is a saying that the media reports only about 50, uh, 25 to 50% of the real incident. The, a lot goes unreported. So for those that are being reported, we should take them as substantial fact. And you understand? But I, I think the, the, the challenge I found is that the uh, vice president is trying to paint a picture of the social media uh, banter. Mm. that goes around so but you know in trying to do that you must be able to streamline media because media is it uh, there are two types of media the mainstream media where we get our news from and the social media where you have the real and the fake news Do you understand so that is where i find us challenging and for uh, for anybody taking that from him you know you cannot spare people in such offices when you perchance feel that you know, the choice of what they use mm. is, not, uh, but is also, not a comfortable word that should help ameliorate, you know, because uh, the people feel challenge and pain right now. That but, but talking about social media and the conventional media, yeah. most people on social media rant after they see what the conventional media has carried. And uh, not now, all the time. I know, there is, there is fake news, but we're saying on the news that is real, 
if people are, if he's saying people are being hysterical they're being hysterical for a reason it may not be their family members today but who knows what will happen yeah, tomorrow sure. now afeni ferre is also saying that from all of the reports that they have gotten, there are indications of a failure of the state of security in Nigeria. And instead of the pres vice president to address that, he's trying to, you know, m make us look like the bad guys. <laughs> well, I don't think he's trying to make us look like a like bad guy. The seat in which he's sitting, you know, they, you probably want to uh, come up with information that will make you look good. And when you look good, and the other party hears, they will feel slighted and want to come at you. That why are you trying to be look good? Because but it's is your this responsibility. But is this a time to try to look good, or is this a time to that's say what, that's what to I'm reach saying. out to Nigerians that's and, what I'm and try to give them hope instead of just trying to make it look like it, it's not even that's happening what I'm saying, or playing down on what is happening? When the people feel that that notion, they come back at you and say, "Is the box stop on your table?" You are the one accountable for the security of life and property in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. you must be alive to those responsibilities. Because if you are not alive to those responsibilities and you want to you know, manage them within the context of words, then they are not acceptable. The truth of the matter is we need to get rid of all this menace as, as bewildered as a people. Yeah. Because if insecurity is, is what we're fighting now, I fear what we'll be fighting down the line in some couple of years, because we need to overcome this insecurity now, so that as a people we can do business, as a, as a people we can live in peace, we can live with our two eyes closed. <laughs> now, he's, uh, Afeni Ferry goes beyond that to say that if the vice president is unaware that we're in a digital world, which explains why Britain and America have issued travel directives to their citizens traveling to Nigeria as to where to go and where not to go. So, going to America, and saying or trying to play down again, I, I, try, I think the word is play down. The vice president was trying to play down and not make Nigeria look like we're bad people. So I'm just wondering to myself, what could have been the best approach to handling these issues? And going forward, because in the past four years, we've had mixed messages where a person says this and then a presidential spokesperson or a vice presidential spokesperson comes out to say, oh, that's not exactly what he was trying to say. I think this is what... So we've had... In, we need clearer messages, messages that would make Nigerians actually, like you said, to, to, to borrow your statement, slip it our eyes closed. What would be a better strategy instead of us having to relieve what we experienced in the past four years? You cannot hide the fact that we're, we're in, a, in, a, in an era where insecurity is perverse. Uh, I just had the experience of somebody who was meant to come to Nigeria and he, he, was, he has agreed. But when he heard the locations and where he needed to go and he just said, I'm sorry, he just wrote me an email saying, I'm sorry, I can't come to Nigeria now because the report I have from my, off, from my country says that those locations are not safe. So, you know, those are real, real, real challenges that we're facing as business people mm -hmm. who do business, who want people to come to Nigeria and, you know, uh, you know, be part of us to do certain projects. So the choice of words in that, you know, you can, it, there's no way you play it that the people will not get at the uh, vice president. Because when it comes to issue of security, everybody is on a knife edge right now. Because the choice of word need to be chosen more carefully. And when you are trying to explain, you know, no amount of re-explaining is too much. Especially, so you explain and re-explain, no, just to make sure that you put out the right message. That's the word because if you don't, because when everybody is tensed, any word you say, and you don't close it, we we'll all take it to the left or to the right. We will shred it and we will create. You know, it, all you just need is to add one word to it, and it, you know, you can take it far as Either you wish. Either start a fire or quell, exactly. Quell. So as and then uh, and then what I found is that to guide against all this. Uh, miscommunication uh, you know the best is for at every time the you know people in authority speak I think there must be a communicate being issued out because when the communicate is being issued out then it would have addressed all those uh, uh, it would have erased all those unsaid that will come out because the communicate will guide and help the policy because but when a, uh, a journalist just speaks that and by his own version or by his own style of writing, mm. you understand, write in a particular order. He can start a war that 
the whole country cannot, you know, might, might not be able to end in quick session of two days like this one that happened. Because this one just started now. We don't know where it's going to end because it's snowballing into the southwest. Before you know it, somebody somewhere will talk about the north and somebody somewhere will speak back. Before you know it, you know, it, it begins to generate a lot of issues that so, we need to begin to nip in the bud because together we can make ourselves safe by guiding our utterances, by, by helping ourselves. When we face real challenges, real challenges are meant to be overcome by being strategic in your word, in your actions, even in, in, in your deeds, because the, the security apparatus in Nigeria now, I'm sure they're working endlessly because they're getting overwhelmed, I think, day by day by all these issues happening. Now, talking about, um, you know, not South, East and West, Fanny Ferry also went ahead to talk about Mr. President being the grand patron of Mieti Ala, and they're asking that he push uh, or puts aside selfish interest and ambition to, you know, try as much as possible to address the issue of cattle rustling and cattle um, full of, you know, mm, all of those headsmen issues. They, they're looking at the general insecurity. The group called on President Buhari to be more proactive on the issue of security in the country. He said the president should separate the office of the president of Nigeria, which he occupies from being also the grand patron of Mieti Allah, which we, according to them, Afeni Ferre in this case, suspect makes it difficult for security agents to go after members of this group whenever they commit crimes that they're being accused of. Well, you see, when you hear such statement, uh, you know, a lot of regards to Afeni Ferre. They have information at their disposal I might not have. But on the look of surface of it, I'll say that, yes, the president at some point before he became the president, it was in the news that he was the president of Meitiala. I don't know how far that is true. He was a patron. He was a patron. How far that is true, I don't know. But, you know, um, the putting the buck squarely where it should belong means that the, uh, the menace of the eight men and the, the, the bandits among them who perpetrated all this fraud should be stopped, be it the president being a full animal or not, because insecurity is insecurity. It, it, the life of people. Who but do you do you sense uh, a, a, um, some form of silence when it comes to this issue of the Mieti Ala or cattle rustling or herders in the north south and the north central, even down to the southeast? It's spreading all the way to the south south. Is there an oath of silence somewhat from the government? Because most people, when issues like this arise, we're looking at the federal government, most importantly, to speak on these issues. Even the National Assembly have not really spoken about this issue. Why would you, why, would, why, why well, do you suspect that nobody's really speaking or attacking this issue head on? <laughs> well, I think we, uh, if the president is not speaking on it, uh, the media is speaking on it and the put to put it squarely very rightly i think the president need to do more in terms of because there are, when it comes to security they all say that not everything can be said but i say that there's a level of information you give to the people that give them comfort there's a level of information you give because your silence means that it's there you're supporting you're against because when something is against uh, is haunting me and you're not talking about how to bring the perpetrators to book, then I begin to worry, especially when the presidency said uh, the, the God will judge the, this uh, mixed strand that are killing people. You know, such words should not come out. Yeah, and you know, and for me, I think it came out of emotion that he had that, wow, this is But that is not an office but that's that, not, you know, that you occupy not with sentiment. That, that should not even because come Because in all. other countries, let's not even, I hate it when we compare ourselves with America because America is way up there and we're still down here but let's just say a country like cameroon <laughs> don't or, even compare please <laughs> no i'm just saying i'm just saying because they're neighbors yeah or ghana you think that if people encroach into their land because you know when this thing started the sultan of sokoto uh, al haji saad abubakar said these people were not nigerians and i asked the question if this were to be ghana 
or let's say Ethiopia, whatever country we want to compare ourselves with in let's the stay, African space. Let's stay with Ghana so that I can give a, uh, a yeah. point in which the Ghanaian authority yes. uh, took position on. Exactly. Would they be letting outsiders, as claimed by al Haji Saad Abubakar, to kill their people and nothing is being done to reprimand them or stop it? And then we say, oh, God will judge them or let us pray because this is something we always take solace in. Well, uh, the, the issue is, as a people, we need to raise our voices all the time when we find any injustice, be it perpetrated by our people or by foreigners. And in this case, Fulani, you know, Fulani, uh, the, the, the Fulani set headers. of people, headers, you know, are d not just in Nigeria alone. They are across the Sahara. Yes, they are. Uh, so, we, so the question is, how do we identify those who are migrating to Nigeria and those are within, are within Nigeria? I think I will situate my context in the context of the, the element of them carrying arms. Because the, from the beginning that we begin to see on the mainstream media, a Fulani either who should be carrying a stick, you know, to, you know, to go around with these animals in the bush, carrying AK-47. It means that there's a real challenge in there for everybody. Because why would you carry an AK-47? Are you trying to protect the animals from another animal that will kill them? And, and AK-47 is gone. So a gun in the hand of a man that is not properly trained is a danger to society. And in this case, I think the presidency needs to issue a lot more information to Nigerians on what they're doing at the border lines. Because if our borders is porous, are the ones perpetrating this fraud, are they foreigners or are they part of the Nigerians that are perpetrating this fraud? Because if, from the report we have, these frauds are perpetrated by both the, some Westerners and some Fulani others in the Southwest. And the report in the media has turned out to be that. But the, 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 the right thing to do right now is to begin to bring perpetrators to book. Because when Fulani editors How do you bring them to book crime, if there is no when they commit law a crime, that, well, yeah, that incriminates what, or no, says this is no, criminal? That's, that's where I'm going. When they criminalizes, a, when that's they the commit a crime, for. the first level is you, you are, get them arrested. When you get them arrested, then you persecution will start. When persecution starts, let's, let's see the face of those who have been persecuted and let them give us test, uh, you know, uh, confessional statement of why. Because people are not asking, why are they perpetrating this crime? Because they perpetrated a crime well enough, well enough if you follow the trend in the North Central, in the, in, in the, uh, in the Benue, and for a long time mm. in other parts, in, in, in Taraba. And this is, the, this, is, um, this is now that it's actually getting, the people of the South are getting real heat out of it. Mm -hmm. So it means that if you don't repel this now, it, the whole Nigeria will be, will be under a siege. Mm. And we must not allow that to happen. And everybody must speak up. See something, say something. Because if, if, if you don't say it, then we're all in it together. Well, quickly, if you say it, you're being hysterical or you're exaggerating it. So how do you get the government to deal with this issue but let's hope that it doesn't escalate more than you know yeah. it already is well we've we'll sp been speaking with rachman adebi he's a political analyst we'll take a short break when we return we'll be looking at the cost of governance in nigeria now especially for the national assembly don't forget that this ninth assembly when they came in they came in with the welcome package of some very interesting millions of naira when we come back we'll talk more stay with us <laughs> 